So you can have your towel slash blanket close by and it's going to be folded up and we'll do that in a moment to make sure it's in the right way. So come on to all fours and just taking the hands right underneath the shoulders, you can spread the fingers and have the knees hip width apart. Now um, let the weight drop of course through your body, through your palms, through your feet, through your knees. So feel uh, more the core than anything else. You feel the core drawing up and in, so the ribs come in. And you feel like you're reaching out through the crown of the head. Now the other thing that's specific is the eyes of the elbows face in, okay? So these circles right here face in, especially as we're women, all women here, because we tend to do this. We tend to hyperextend. We have a different radial ulna connection. So just watch that your shoulders are your shoulders are down. That will draw the eyes of the elbows in, and then you're just so right. <laughs> and then in your all fours position, you're just gonna look ahead, take an in-breath, and then you can exhale and round right into cat round and press the tops of the feet down. And then breathe in, gaze ahead, slide the shoulder blades down, flat back and then exhale and round. Press the tops of the feet down to draw the tailbone down, and then flat back, flat back. So here we are, tabletop, stay here. Now, you're gonna take an inhale, and then do just the rounding of the spine, but tuck the tailbone under more than anything, and let the head fall and round the spine. Stay in the round, and keep pressing the tops of the feet down. Pull the core in as it feels like you're pressing your palms through the mat and down, breathing fully. And then do a little turn with the head falling and the chin tucked in. Turn the head a little side to side to stretch through the back of the neck. And the more you tuck your chin and the more you can turn with the breathing, breathing first and then the turn, then the more you can stretch in through the very back side of the neck really tuck the chin and don't be alarmed if it's really noisy because <laughs> the upper the upper back the cervical spine is very mobile so it can be very crunchy lots of popping or, or sounds of grating in there and then you can just release to a flat uh, tabletop position again now come back into child's pose you're going to bring the arms alongside the body now here's where you might use your bolster to have the bolster here just to have the forehead to the edge or a pillow, just depending on how much the low back gives. So Virginia at home, if you wanna have something there, just to be able to let your shoulders fall forward. It's kind of brilliant. It's the shoulders fall forward so much, it's like a turtle, turtle shell. And if you imagine that a tortoise, a tortoise can breathe into the shell, which it can, and that's what you're doing, is you're creating that expansion in the upper back. I don't really know if a turtle can breathe into a chill, but I think, I'm kind of imagining it can. I believe everything is <laughs> Thank you. I do know if you need to get a turtle out of its shell, then you stick your, thing, your finger into the anus and it comes right out. So um, I had turtles as a kid. Um, and you're breathing in and out. I'm so glad you made it, Daniel. And just the tailbone is back. Now do a little wiggle side to side. Letting the shoulders fall forward. Breathing in and out through the nose. Now on your next in-breath, draw gently back up and you can take the hands right under the shoulders again. Now, this time in your cat stretch, reach back and tuck the toes under first and then reach back. See if you can pull them under more, get more of a hook of the toes. Hands are right underneath the shoulders. Now, um, make sure the fingers spread again. Let's just go through the cat stretch again. 
get really meticulous with the form. So I want you to first of all look up, arc your back, so really stick the bum bones up or shine your anus up to the full moon tonight, whatever works for you, and then you're gonna exhale and press the palms through the floor, round the spine, stay there please, breathe in and out. You're looking at the knees now and then down to the feet. That will direct the spine to be a little longer. And then also just check, check and see that the knees are even. I noticed my right knee was a little further forward. Good, take a couple more breaths, hollow out the core as you do, and you really feel the shoulder blades come forward. The low back is super tucked. This ought to be a stretch in the low back. And again, on the exhale, really hollow out the core. Okay, here we go, right back into tabletop position and then gazing up, arc the back. That's the in-breath, and then you exhale, and you feel like you're pressing the palms through the mat, stay in that upper lift, rounding of the spine. And then here we go. In your own rhythm of the breath, breathe in, gaze up, shoulders back, and then you can exhale, round the spine. Breathe in, gaze up, shoulder blades down, tipping the bum bones up, lift the eyes. And exhale and round the spine. Good. Now point the toes, come on the tops of the feet. And once again, come on back down into your child's pose. Releasing the forehead down. Teresa, how's the back? Um, it's okay. Okay. So if you find any pose feels really, really good, just stay with it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, take your time to... And that's, of course, in our practice all the time. If one pose is really working for you, just stay with it and keep on repeating it until you feel complete with it. So with your breathing, let the shoulders fall forward. Does anybody want an adjustment in this pose? Need to bring their tailbone back a little bit more. And just let the shoulders fall forward. Really good. You're coming into the awareness of the breath. Feel the length from the tailbone right through to the top of the head. Notice if you want to wiggle the arms down a little so the shoulders move away from the head. Good, we're getting good compression in through the GI tract. This is fantastic for digestion. Breath. Now on your next in-breath, slowly uncurl, and I hope you felt lots of length in the spine there. Now we'll take the hands forward. Here we go, underneath the, the uh, shoulders again. And this time we're going to come down to the elbows and we're going to have the arms and the elbows apart just as they were. Hands are just out from the elbows. So that means, you know, everybody looks good. You're just like that. Perfect. Framed. Now exactly the same movement. You're going to breathe in, gaze up. It's going to be a tiny arc of the neck. And then exhale and round and feel as if you're pressing your elbows through the floor. Inhale, gaze up. Tip the eyes up, tip the bum bones up. And then you can exhale and round, pressing the tops of the feet down. Inhale, gazing up, lift. Tipping the bum bones up, lift the eyes. And then exhale and round. Once more, inhale, gazing up, lifting the eyes. And then exhale and round, tuck the tailbone under. Good. Then come to neutral spine. Come back up onto the hands. Okay, we're going to take the right leg out and just reach out through that right heel. Stretch in <coughs> deeply into the calf and press the heel out, bolt straight through the back of the leg. And then you can uh, step the foot behind the left. So you're going to have that foot straight behind and then roll onto the outside of that right foot. And you're gonna dunk and drop your right hip. 
So you're doing a side waist stretch and you're looking left as you drop the right waist. Yep, that's it. And that right leg is super straight. So you wanna really press down that foot. Good, looking towards the foot. Here we come back up. And then you bring that knee in. Okay. And then extend the left leg out. <clears throat> Reach out through that left heel. Keep the toes super tucked. Press the heel away. Get deep. Deep into the calf. Reaching out. Really good. The core is drawing in. Now you can take that left foot just behind to the right. Drop onto the outside of that left foot. Turn and gaze to the right. The shoulders slide down so you're not hunching up the back. Turn, let that left hip, that front left pocket area drop and pull up from the ribs there. So you get a really good rotation. And then you can breathe in and draw all the way back up. Good. That was great. That's a great stretch. Yeah, good. <clears throat> now we're gonna go a little further. So we're gonna um, uh, bring the left leg back and you're gonna bring the left heel out on the inside and then you're gonna turn and come up and open the chest and let the top shoulder be stacked on top of the bottom one. Good, and I want you to feel how to breathe open the rib cage here. Good, so the ribs really come in, the chest is open. Good, the underside waist pulls up. Really good. And then come on down, back again to all fours. And then just look up for a moment. I'm just gonna demonstrate, we're gonna do that side again. I want you to feel like that leg is really reaching out. So not just, you know, there it is. If you can really reach out. And then when you come up, it's very much like, ta-da! Like you wanna really open up and back. And then if that's amazing, listening to the shoulder, you might take the hand back and then that will draw the rib back. So just notice if that's okay with the shoulder. So here we go, we come back out. You take that same left leg out, reach out, roll on the inside, open the chest, take the shoulder back. Ta-da! Open. <laughs> take the hand behind, maybe press the head back a bit, opening through the shoulder, really listening, opening the rib cage, framed, open it up and back. Okay, come on back. Okay, I hope your right hand was okay. If you're getting a bit tired in the supporting hand, just make sure the rib cage is pulling up because sometimes that's the key. So like this, if I'm dumped, I'm gonna put weight in my shoulder girdle. If you pull up, this is just anchoring you but not taking the weight of your torso. So here we go, we take the right leg out, reach it out, and then roll on the inside of that right foot. Take the right arm up, stack, Open the chest, shoulder blade back, reach up through the ribs, potentially take that right hand back, press the head into the hand, rib cage in, so half a giggle. <laughs> Just pulling that right low rib cage in, and then you can take the right arm up, you're open, and then come on back down, come into all fours position. Okay, the next child's pose, we're going to bring the knees wide, bring the knees to the outside edge of the mat, if that's okay. And then you're gonna take the arms alongside the body. You may use your bolster or pillow again for the forehead, and then you release. And let your shoulders fall forward. So you stay with the collapse of the shoulder blades forward to round the spine even more fully. And then feel, feel how this pose, it might be a deeper stretch in a different area of the sacrum for you, and if it's good. Really good. Good, the tailbone is back. Yeah, the shoulders collapse. They just fall forward. Good, Sandra. Really nice. And then you can breathe in and come on back up. Okay, very good. Now we'll take the hands right under the shoulders again. Draw the knees in. <clears throat> and then we'll take the hands forward six inches. Now take your right knee and take it in front and across. So you've got the right knee on top of the left. Then you're gonna take your back knee out, so that's your back ankle. 
And then just square your body so that you're gonna have your hands right out into tabletop position. And then you're gonna bravely go where maybe your bum's never gone before, <laughs> and that is pull your body back to wherever you can go and round your spine. I just made this up. I hope it feels good. <laughs> you've got the right knee in front, <laughs> and you're pulling the core back, and you're rounding your spine. You wanna really, really round. And your head dangles. And do feel free to turn the head side to side. Keep the round of the spine, stay with the breathing. That's the key. Good, the bum comes back, 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 child's pose fashion. Good. And then you can come on all the way back up. Take the hands back in six inches where they were, and you've got the right knee in front, you're gonna change, just do a jump, flip leap, and take your, I'm kidding, take your right knee back, Take your left leg in front. That's something my grandson would do. And then take your right foot out. It's starting to affect me. And you're going to just come back again. And again, find out where you're going to end up. Might be a very different scenario on this side. Let the head fall. Breathing. The spine rounds back very nice. Notice the fantastic stretch. Maybe it's a lot more on the right side this time. Just notice the differences, please, with such interest. You're breathing in and out through the nose. Really good. Breathing steadily. One more breath. Okay, come on back up. Push into the palms. Uncross that left knee. And then we're going to come into a kneeling position. Now, if it's too much to kneel for the knees, then feel free to do a standing kneel. Um, and also feel free to tip over to one side and bring the hips down. We're going to take the uh, blanket. And so, Daniel, we're just using a blanket to roll up today. So um, technically, if you really want to have the blanket like properly folded, um, so it just means you won't have any kinks, I kind of sort of do, um, and that was pure luck. And then you roll it up. Now the first time I saw this was actually during the pandemic, and it was some clever person who started online right away, and she was very, very neat. It was hilarious. She did it in the basement, her dog kept running in, and she was really good. And I just loved what she was teaching. And she, so she took a beach towel and she rolled it up, which is a little bit um, firmer than this, but I want you to have a bit more mush. Um, and <coughs> now please know this is a biggie and it's a great stretch for the calves. And if it's, and basically you take it into the fold of the knee and then you're going to let the uh, mush go right into your calves. And it can also really stretch the Achilles too. And if it's too much, of course, you would have like a pillow under the bum. So Virginia, this is where I was mentioning having a, uh, another pillow or like a couch pillow <clears throat> um, so that you can sit back and you just get that, that stretch right in through the calves. And I'm hoping you'll, that's really good. Through the calves? Yeah, I'm feeling it more in the Achilles because that's where my tightness is. Yeah, so I'm like, well, you're feeling it more there? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, you could definitely feel the quad yeah, stretch I feel there. More like Feet. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel stretched. I just feel that my weights on my calves. Yeah, I think that's your flexibility. Yeah, you're probably not having any effect at all. Flexible <laughs> <laughs> piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it hurts my calves because my weights on them. Oh yes, it does hurt your calves. Yes, it does. <laughs> just so you know, it does hurt your calves. Oh, okay. <laughs> like there's a lot of pressure in there. Oh yeah, um, really mush it's mush. very much like in Thai massage. We <coughs> press, and I've done this with you, Nguyen, where I press into the uh, folds of the hip flexors and I put the whole body weight in. It closes the femoral artery for 10 seconds and then when the hands come off, there's a flush of fresh blood in. So this is squeezing out the blood in the calves, maybe the Achilles, and then they come off. You take the legs in front, see what oh. happens. And there might be a bit of a whoosh, yeah. kind, of, kind of like the fire yeah. is filling in. So that, that's the squish version of how to stretch a muscle. Calves are a good candidate for that. 
Um, so now the legs are straight in front. And if you can really pull back the toes and then take the hands um, just behind, the fingertips are right to the buttocks. And you're gonna pull the toes back as you reach out through the heels, press into the palms, and then take an in-breath, gaze up, lift the chin, and then you can exhale and tuck the chin. You're gonna keep the legs actively reaching out as you pull back from the toes and as you press into the palms. And the shoulders, the shoulders come forward. You might think you press the shoulder blades back. You actually press them down and the shoulders come forward. Really good. Good, beautiful tall spine. Yeah, that's good. Can you just tip to your right a little bit, Sandra? No, I'm trying not to put too much pressure on this Oh, hand. there you are. That's, yes. That's right. this hand, so. Absolutely. I have to you can rise from, just think that, well, not just, but feel the, the lift from here. Yeah, yeah, thank you for, I forgot about your hand. Okay, and then we're gonna take the arms up, rise, feel yourself ascend from the base of the spine, have the shoulders <coughs> dropped, flare the toes back and reach out from the heels, and then in your lift, pivot forward from the low back, and then let the hands land wherever they do, and pull the toes back as you reach forward, right from the low back. Wherever you are is good, feel that reach, and feel yourself um, be at the front of the bumble. Feel free to pause and get your butt cheeks back. And that can help to get that fold off <coughs> on top of the hamstrings. The feet are apart and you're pulling the toes back and you're lifting from the low back. So you really pull up from that low back. So, really good. Can the legs be active? Can you pull up through the thighs, pull them into the hips? It ain't easy. You really want to pull in there. Good, is everybody happy? <laughs> I used to almost cry for <laughs> revenge. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> and then you come all the way back up. Okay. <sighs> So my wish for you is that you feel a hinge from the low back. Normally we just feel a whole bunch of pull. Could you really, really, really pull up, reach forward? A lot of people will say, do I go to get my head down or my chest down or reach out? Technically you wanna have a long spine, but basically you get to a point where there will be a rounding. So see how much you can reach the chest forward as you extend out and really pull up from the low back. Does anybody need an adjustment? Yes. Great. Wow, that's great. Oh, <laughs> teachers in Toronto, Esther Myers, her yoga teacher was Vanda Scaravelli, and Vanda Scaravelli um, started practicing yoga when she was 40, and by the time she passed, I think she was 92, <clears throat> she could do a forward bend, so she'd be like this, in a forward bend, and she'd have somebody on her back, oh, doing whatever, handstand or whatever, you know. <laughs> So we tried it this summer on the beach. I should find the video. And we met a lot of people. <laughs> um, so I would get into full forward bend. And Julius, who I feature on the bulletin board, would, would get on my back and do a plank back off me. Um, it's just that I get the giggles because I couldn't hold it because it, like, it was just such a wild feeling. And of course, a fishtail and he couldn't stay there. So I've got to get serious about it. But um, it was a lot of fun. Um, my point being, it was one of my wishes in my life was, oh, could we get to such a forward fold that somebody could push it down and do something acrobatic and then <laughs> found the person. It was so exciting. 
So we've done the length. Now I wonder, we did the uh, staff pose. Could you, and you don't have to lift, could you press the palms into the floor, the shoulders forward, scoop the tailbone up, you don't have to lift, and come into a reverse tabletop with the gaze to the ceiling. Now, the activation of the knees away from you lengthens the lumbar region, and you really let the palms, uh, the weight drop through the palms, scooch the tailbone out, and so that's where you imagine you have like a mouse's tail, and I'm pulling that tail out, you're gazing to the ceiling, unless it's absolutely wonderful to let the head come back because it feels good, and you still feel like the throat is open. So it doesn't feel like it's like this, like tight, but you feel really open, and the tailbone is lengthening out, and you're breathing, and the head drops back completely, if that's fine, with the throat, and breath. And of course, you can stay down, and then on your next in-breath, come all the way down. Okay, any comments? Did that was really hard for me. Yeah. So the other way, thank you for saying that. The other way is the legs in front. You can push the sternum up this way. You'll get the same activation and through the ribs, and you can pull the rib cage up. So that's a good arc as well. Um, chin in just a little, Sandra, just oh. a little. Yeah, just that looks more, that looks freer through the, the throat. Good. Okay. Now, um, come into a pointed toe forward bend. You can have your feet together. The heels will be apart just to open in through the outsides of the hips. Coming forward. And then you can let the head drop. So you're gonna round your spine. Come out to the feet. And if you can get to the feet, push the toes down. Stretching through the shins and breathing in and out through the nose. Just let the head dangle and do any little rotation side to side to let the weight of the head fall even more. Reaching out from the low back. And then you can come on all the way back up. You're gonna lift. Okay, we've opened the low back, so let's continue by coming into the spinal twist. You can take your right leg up, and you're going to bring your right ankle up quite high, and reach the left heel out. Now, you can stay here, because that might be a really great stretch. So you're going to pull the knee in, and then there's the potential to get really low with the left elbow. And then you turn and you gaze up to the right, and you're going to take that right arm up and you're going to open and you're going to turn and you're going to feel both sides of the bone down if you can <clears throat> and you're going to turn and you look back as far as you can without any strain and then that right hand comes down thumb turns out and you prop up you're going to take that hand in as close as you can <clears throat> as you push down into that hand and stay on both sides of the bum as you lift and rise. Gazing back. Do really, really pull that knee in. That'll hug you around more. Hug you around more so you'll really, really use the hug of the, the grip of the elbow. And then you can come back to the front and hug that knee in and see if you can get more of a stretch right in through that right buttock as you really pull in and attempt to stay tall. So our tendency will be to bit at the back of the bum. So see if you can really pull the bum bones in as you gaze ahead. And then just notice if you can take that right foot a bit closer back because you've pulled the knee in so much. So Daniel, I'm just doing this kind of walk in of the foot. If there is any mechanism there to just get a little tighter and then you take the arm up again, rotate back, press into the palm as you get that great rotation to your right. Everything is tight uh, in, as, as in pulling the knee in. So you're hugging that knee in, breathing in and out through the nose. 
open through the chest. One more breath. Now gently come on back to the front. Great, well uncross that right leg. Reach the right heel out, and again, get to the front of the bum bones. And then you can take the left leg up, get that heel in really high, I'm gonna rotate. So you wanna take that heel as high as you can get, and stay to the front of the hip and make sure this right heel is straight out from your thigh. And then you'll pull that knee in really tight, get the right elbow down, get yourself lifted from the low back. So that's kind of the key, is that lift from the low back. And that helps to get the space in here, because we were talking about getting a good twist. And then when you raise the arm, see that the shoulders are dropped, so we're not using any upper body to rise the arm, we're actually using the rise from the low back. Mm -hmm. And then you turn the thumb, take the hand behind, prop yourself up, get that hand in nice and close. Get the lift again, right from the bum. We're really, 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 really pulling in. Rising from the rib cage. Staying with the breath, looking back. Good, stay there. Keep feeling both sides of the bum bones down. Just a bit more of a shift, Sandra, to the right. Yep, really good. Really good. Good, that right heel is reaching out. Good, Tracy, you can take the right foot over to the right, please. So you wanna take the right foot over, the right foot, actually. Yep, there's your hip, good. And breath, excellent, excellent. Good, release the hands, rotate back to the front, keep the posture. See if you can hug that knee in a little tighter to rise you up from your low back, so you really lift from there, and maybe you even get a little lower with the grip, more of a hug, and maybe that left foot could walk in a little bit so you pull up from your low back again. You take the arm back again. You prop up again and you rotate to the left. Find a really good lift here. Coming up from both bum bones. Fantastic, the shoulders are down. Rise from the crown of the head. Again, both bum bones down, shoulders free. And then relax to the front, letting go. And then you can uncross that leg. Now we're gonna do the same thing lying down, which is kind of nicer. Um, you're gonna, I'll just demonstrate before you get down there. You're gonna come into um, a lying pigeon pose. So the right knee will bend up, use your opposite left hand to pull it in and then you're going to pull the leg in towards you and do a fabulous rock side to side. Okay, let's take the right. Yes, yeah, we'll take the right leg up. <clears throat> Pardon me. Pulling that leg in. The left leg is out. Really good. That's it. Really good, pulling in. And you can let that right knee rotate out a lot. You can even use your right hand to turn it out to get an opening through that right hip. Yeah. Excellent. Keep pulling the ankle in. Let your shoulders rest back. Good, pulling tighter if you can. Keep the knee rotating away, away, away. And then you can release that right leg and take a moment to lie there and oh. feel the effects on both sides. Really good. Really good. Letting your body go. So what do you notice on that right side? Uh, softer. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, 
Yeah. It's it's so relaxed. relaxed. It's longer. It's longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that does happen. Yeah. yeah if I was to go look at your ankles, your right leg might be further out. <laughs> That's good. You know, you reminded me the first. I think it was the first five years I was practicing. I was lying in shavasana. This was in my other studio, which is half the length, and I um I had a bolt of life force run through. And um, it was kind of like a like a sleep tremor. My whole body felt like it. I think it felt like it, the whole thing bolted off the floor and then landed again. Mm-hmm. And I I uh, I thought my legs were like giraffes. Like I, I felt as if whoosh, the life force threw flew through the backs of my legs like straws. Mm-hmm. And I actually looked up to see if my legs were at the front door because I wasn't <laughs> sure. I really wasn't sure. I knew logically they couldn't be, but they were. Everything. They were eternity. It was such a wild feeling. Now take that same right leg and hug it in and come on into circles. Just let your upper body rest back completely. Good. The bend of the elbows is pulling the knee in. Really good. And other direction. Good, and then you're gonna to twist to your left. Take the left hand on the outside of the right knee, twist over to the left. Take the right arm out to the side, a little higher than the shoulder. And the palm is up, and you gaze towards that right hand. You're opening into the right side. Good, would anybody like an adjustment in this pose? Okay, great, great. You know, just do any little further turn to that side, any little further turn to that side that feels like you can fall to the left a bit more. Notice if you want to change the position of the right arm, if you want to take it up higher or down lower. And just feel how to keep opening up that right side, low back, hip. Breathing fully. And then breathe in, draw all the way back up. You can hug that right knee in. And then take an in breath. Exhale and lift the head and tuck the chin. Draw the right knee in really snug. Now keep the chin lifted if it's okay in the neck. Return to the half to the pigeon and pull that left ankle up towards your nose. I'm just kidding. Um, bring the leg up as high as you can and just wrap the arm over. See if you can like get the ankle to come high though because you will get to the insertion of the buttock and the left leg is relaxed and wherever you are, notice if you take the foot higher, what happens? And if you take the foot over to the side more, what happens? to feel the different place of the hip insertion. And then let the head down and keep doing that. Just keep playing there. So you keep um, doing the turn, yeah, to get the, to get the, um, <clears throat> pardon me, the uh, outside of your hip more and more.
breathing. Good, take another minute to play there, to turn, to rotate, to do anything that helps you to open the hip. And you may notice um, if you take the, the foot towards you, like just again, notice how you come into the insertion of the hamstring at the buttock. And that's the cause of a lot of sacral, you know, sacral tailbone tightness area, SI. Good, and another five deep breaths to complete this side. And again, keep pulling the foot towards you, that's really great, or over. Just keep feeling for the give and the full range at the same time. This is where you really turn into your own teacher. You feel into the fullest pose that your body needs with the breathing. And then you can gently release the leg. Come down and just relax. Take a moment to completely let go and let that right side totally assimilate all the shift in your hip. And once again, feel the right side. Just feel how that right side is maybe heavier. And again, as Sandra was saying, softer. Maybe even more in contact with the floor. Just feel like one big puddle. <laughs> Let everything go. Take a minute in your Shavasana. Do any little wiggling you need to do to feel more in contact with the floor. And then take in three more deep breaths. One final full breath. Well, not final full breath. <laughs> to teach for the nat naturist society oh. so I said you know I do do a lot of naked yoga but I don't tend to do it in public <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah there's this whole movement to do naturist yoga and well you know everything right and uh, um, I actually went to a play in Toronto oh my goodness was it ever good it was called sheets sheets um, I'm gonna say this was five years ago and um, I found out that the Nature Society had been there the night before to see it. So imagine watching a play and you're naked. And um, so apparently they turn the theater temperature up quite a bit when, uh, when they go, so everybody's warm when they, when they watch it. And there's actually a lot of nudity in the play, so it kind of made sense. But um, yeah, just a random entry there. Just uh, I can't imagine doing yoga naked in public with everybody else's bottom of the air. So, that aside, <laughs> take your left leg up. We are um, coming into pigeon. So you can use your right arm to pull that left ankle across. Let the left knee rotate out. 
pull that right foot high if that's good. Good, and Virginia, I'll just show you from the side. So you've got the knee kind of really rotating out like this as much as you can as the ankle pulls up. And you may do a lovely rock, a little side to side, opening the sacrum. Feel the leverage in the hip as the knee turns out a little. Good. Take another half minute to move and draw the foot where it needs to go with your breathing. Release the foot, hug that left knee in. Hug in nice and snug, let the elbows bend. And then you can tip over to the right side. Take that right hand on the outside, draw the left hand back. Put a wonderful tip to that left side. And good, the left arm is back. Good, opening through the chest. Breath, good. Taking your time here. And then as we there in the stretch, again, just notice if there's any way that you can deepen the stretch, perhaps the arm coming higher or the shoulder back more on the left. Just notice how to let go more. And then on your next in-breath, hug the knee back to the center right in front and pull in really snugly. Good, the elbows to the sides. Great. Now once again, reach the foot up. Grab on with the right hand so we'll come into line pigeon again. And we'll use the lift of the upper body. So you're gonna pull in going to tuck the chin in, and I'm just wondering, did I do this on the other side? Did I? Uh, I did. Yeah. We did. Okay, because yeah. I remember lifting. Okay, good. I just couldn't remember if I thank you. So we're going to hold on. Get your super big tuck. <clears throat> Pardon me. And do keep <clears throat> the right leg reaching out, so you're not um, you're not just pulling the left hip up, but the right hip presses down because the heel reaches out on the right leg, and you get. You get to round into your back more 
and potentially hug in more as the knee rotates out as much as you can to the left and you're reaching that right heel out. Really good. That's it. And then the upper body comes down. Keep the tight grip if you could. Yeah. And then do a little rock side to side. No gasping is good, Sandra. Okay. <laughs> and breath. And breath. Breath. So good. Again, notice that there's a spot that you get a deep stretch and maybe even stay there and do a few deep breaths. Remembering that yoga is, is the experience of it is usually different every day. It really depends on what your body is, you know, announcing to you. And you get to go with that announcement and just kind of find what to do every day. It's kind of ambitionless. We're not attempting to do something we did last week or we're really more breathing and seeing what happens. The breathing will take you to your so-called edge if you really breathe. And then you can gently release that leg. We did great, great twisting there. Now let the leg release and let go into the floor, letting your whole body rest back. Because now it's story time, oh. so. <laughs> So you can lie there. Feel free to have your blanket for the next five minutes. Yeah, please turn. Yeah. There's just, I've got this little cup. Yeah, I need this too. So you want to run. Can I get cozy so your body temperature is still warm? And good, so your whole body letting go into the floor as we come into the best part of the class story time. <laughs> My brother and I were talking the other day about how he loves to read on his um on his uh what are, the, what are those things called? The readers, Kobe or something? What? Uh, but he reads online. Oh, 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 oh. Kindles. Kindles, Kindles, thank you. Um, and this, this wonderful book that I keep reading from is not in defense of the book, of the written word, of having the book in your hand. It's, it's just people saying how much they delight in the tangibility of the book in their hand and, and then, you know, having it on their shelf to go back to. Um, this book is so pretty because <clears throat> I find that um, people are, the letters to young readers about why they read really brings you into that place of beauty rather than morals, you know, like how wonderful it is to read a book. And, we want to make sure at this time, as um, things are kind of so-called amping up, a bit more stress and what's going to happen, uh, that we make sure we do something beautiful every day, something that reminds us of what we really care about. So continuing to read from A Velocity of Being, Letters to a Young Reader by Maria Popova. And she edited this and gathered letters from people all over the world. This letter is from Ellen Handler Spitz. Ellen Handler Spitz lives in New York with tall walls of books and a distant view of the Empire State Building. She writes, draws, teaches, and dances for pure joy. She notices strangers who remind her of characters in art, books, and opera. She recites poetry and reads aloud to children. P 
Paris gladdens her heart, as do words of page, paint, clay, and song. <laughs> I want to meet this woman. Here is her letter. Dear reader, here is a story letter for you. Here is a story letter for you. In quotes, Ellen, what are you doing with that book? Put it away right now. We are going to visit Aunt Sadie and you won't have any time to read. How many times have I told you it's rude to go visiting with the book? End of quote. Mother was very strict, but Ellen hated to go anywhere without a book. It made her feel like a person without an arm or a nose. Even now she is grown up, she can't leave her house without a book. Books make her suitcase heavy when she travels. Books lie on the floor all over her house. When you visit grown up Ellen in Baltimore, you find books in every room, <laughs> even the closets and the bathrooms. When Ellen was a little girl and went to other people's houses, she felt uncomfortable if she saw no books. Something was missing. Books were her friends. With a book to read, she knew she wouldn't be lonely or bored. Once a week, mother took Ellen and her little sister Connie to the public library. They rode on a city bus. They borrowed 10 books from the children's room. Library day was Ellen's favorite day of the week. She was proud of having her own library card and liked to reach up on tiptoes to give it to the librarian at the high counter who stamped all the books with their due dates. Mother said Ellen could borrow as many books as she could carry. So you can picture the teetering tower on her lap as the bus jounced down the street on their way home. As soon as she got inside the door, Ellen unzippered her jacket and dived into the first book like a duck, page after page, then book after book. But when she got to the end of the last one, there were still many days before the next trip to the library. Mother would shake her head. Read more slowly, Ellen. But how could Ellen do that? It was much too exciting. There were dog stories and horse stories and pioneer stories, fairy stories, and, and stories about children who lived far away or long ago. At bedtime, Mother always read the girls a poem or two. The poems seemed to come from inside Mother's voice even though she was reading to them out loud from a book. Now, Ellen is a professor and she teaches her students about books. She even writes books herself. Some of them are about children like you. At times she wonders which is nicer, reading a book or writing one for others to read. What do you think? Yours, Ellen Handler Spurts. I had two memories arise. Um, one of them I'll quickly share. Um, reading that, I think that's what's so wonderful about reading somebody's, about somebody's joy. Uh, one day I was driving along the gardener and I was going to pick up my daughter and her little friend Nathaniel. They were best buddies in grade one. And it was a beautiful summer day. And as I drove along the gardener, I hit a monarch butterfly and it went in, it hit my windshield. And I remember like my heart tightening. And then when I got to the school, I forgot all about it because I was thinking so much about getting the kids and parking and parked in front of the school, got out, ran up the stairs, fetched them. And they're talking joyfully. They're always engaged in some very deep conversation, those two in grade one. And as I'm taking them to the car, Nathaniel looks at the windshield and he goes, oh, a monarch, a monarch, a monarch. And he says, it's hurt. And, and Sarah looks at me, she goes, can we go to the library? Because, you know, this was like, I guess, 27 years ago. So we really didn't have um, anything to Google at the time. So we went to the, we jumped in the car, we went to the library. And um, of course they had no manners because they were so excited about saving this monarch and they needed to know what to do. So they ran at the front of the queue, like right to the front. <laughs> and they screamed to the librarian, there's a monarch and it's really hurting, it's on the windshield, we don't know what to do. And of course, 
But the librarian just went shh and did her librarian stern, you know, mean face. And they both looked at me like, but like, this is important. And then I looked at the queue and everybody in queue said, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so the librarian served them first and they got to save the monarch. I do remember we had it in a shoebox in the living room for about a week and I don't remember anything after that. But uh, that, that idea that when something went wrong, you went to the library <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> was kind of how it worked. <laughs> such a lovely story. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was really, really such compelling. A sweet story. <laughs> so I know that many of us have something we turn to when we need to feel guidance or when we need to feel some kind of understanding of, of what to do for ourselves or somebody who's hurt or where we're hurting. And certainly, maybe those shelved books are something that you go back to. Um, and I do feel like at this time with uh, the beauty of this week and the warm weather and, and how much we could enjoy almost like a springtime to keep that alive, keep that alive, that fresh feeling. Because things could get more constricting in the next while. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep that feeling, keep that lightness in your heart, that buoyancy inside. It, it's not even faking buoyancy, it's there. It's just we, we don't remember when life gets dull or constricted. And I think sometimes we keep forgetting that any time we do start to go down the rabbit hole or worry or get concerned, it's just an idea that's trying to take over our minds. And, and one final note, I, I have a new idea of the word concerned. Um, my my four-year-old grandson said it the other day and I laughed my head off because he, he his mom told him to do something and he stopped and he looked at her and it took him quite a long time to speak, but he said, mom, I'm a bit concerned. <laughs> and I, I haven't been able to be concerned since without laughing my head off. Um, so maybe if that helps, this little innocent phase going, I'm a bit concerned. It was quite <laughs> disconcerting. <laughs> So we'll come out of our Shavasana, our little half time, and you can bend the knees right into the body and just do a little rock side to side. And pull the knees in super wide to rock side to side. And then bring the legs higher to the heels coming rising into happy baby. And you can hold on to the low legs or the feet and let the knees bend down. Yeah, and do your lovely rock. We're gonna take our time here. So make sure the shoulders are free so your elbows are pulling the legs in, the elbow bend, not your shoulders up. Um, do any little wiggling of the head to make sure the neck is good. And make sure that elbows, again, bend a lot. And if you want to really stretch the SI joint sacral area, um, bend the knees down low if you can to the outside. <clears throat> Good. And then notice what you feel. Do you feel one side more? Can you feel the pull of the legs in with the uh, shoulders back? Yeah. Good. And then a couple more breaths. Good. Now let the heels draw and just let the knees bend and rest for a moment with the feet on the floor and let the arms rest to the side. Completely let go again. Great. Now stretch the arms out to the side like a T and press the arms back. 
wriggle the shoulder blades under so the neck is long and really free. And then you can do a, a little rock of the knees side to side, knees and feet are apart. Getting a bit of massage in through the low back. Great. And then we're going to roll over to your right side. And then we're going to get into some serious yoga. <laughs> so we're going to um, really open in through the front body. I'd like you to start in all fours position with the hands right under the shoulders, knees apart. And then you're going to lower to the floor. So I want you to take your legs back and lower down. I'm just going to take this off. So let yourself come right down to the floor. <clears throat> and just feel um, your legs come back. So you want to really reach the legs back. And one at a time so you can get out from the pubic bone. And then take the elbows directly underneath the shoulders and your palms are apart and press the tops of the feet down and the pubic bone will come down and slide the shoulder blades down. And you're going to gaze slightly up with the eyes but not lift the chin. So keep the chin down so the back of the neck is long. Just notice if you need to do any wiggling to get long through the hips through the front uh, pocket area, so as, and keep pressing the feet down. Now you're gonna turn and look to your right and keep pressing both elbows down evenly and turn in any way that feels good through the neck. You might look down or a bit up and feel free to keep changing the position of the head. We're working in through the side muscles. And when you come to, say, the right side, you're gonna stretch a bit more through the left front rib cage. And then we're going to rotate to the other side. Just gazing to that side. And again, you might look up. And Sandra, are you okay with the sun in your face? Yes. Yeah, because I can take the blind down if it's too much for your eyes. Yeah, Love it. You're kidding. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Good. And then you can come back to your center. Now, take your time to move and navigate and turn to where you want to. You can um, do this. You can actually like drop the ear down. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna that stretch. Good. I want you to just play with how to rotate and turn to open through different areas of the spine. The other thing I find really nice is if you really press down into the elbows and I'm gazing up to the right and pulling up through the left the left side, so pulling up the skin like cobra on that left side feels really good. Breathing. Keep feeling how to open here. Okay, now return to the center. Take your hands stacked one on top of the other, elbows to the outside, and release the forehead to the floor. Come into front Shavasana, letting the whole body go. And one more breath. Now you can take the hands alongside the body. You're going to turn the palms up and the shoulders will come forward. Great. Now the hands move towards the feet and you're going to look up, but please don't lift the chin. And you're going to press the tops of the feet down, really, really down. So that pulls the tailbone down. And then the shoulders go down your back as much as you can and you keep reaching towards the feet. Keep pressing the feet down and breathe and breathe. Stay with a, a real activation of the shoulders down. And then maybe you can lift the legs out up and bowing out. Notice if you can. And notice if you can really keep the hands moving towards the feet. Fantastic. And then gently release. 
Okay, release. Please come to the forehead again. And just let me know how that felt. Anything you noticed? Okay. I mean, every muscle was being engaged. Yeah. Your, your buttocks, your thighs, your back. Yeah. Everything, everything. Yeah. Your neck. Yeah. Like, your shoulders. We, uh, we really don't activate the back of the body. And um, so firing up that area, I remember it's very helpful for back pain. Um, you know, in the 80s, they would have said, don't do that. And now we know to do it. So here's my point. When you do bow, I'll demonstrate once again. And my favorite bow pose in the whole world was when baby Arjun was here. And his mom was teaching uh, baby yoga. And he was like this. I think for half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was a day like today, but the sun was at a spot that the studio was flooded. And I came in and he was just like this. And I was like, is he going to stop, Tamara? His mom, I said, that's because he did yoga until he gave birth. And, and he is a yogi. I've never seen a baby so high and so alert and just never knowing he was up. <laughs> so I say all that to say, can you be baby-like and be curious <laughs> about how much you can open your front body and reach the legs up because it's a lot of activation. Yeah. It's a lot of activation. So please find the, <laughs> the, the joy. I'm just going to watch your poses. The hands move towards the feet. Yeah, you really open through the front and the legs really reach out so that you lengthen good through the, the thighs. You really reach out there, good. The top of the, good, the top of the head just reaching forward, your feet are reaching out, beautiful, beautiful. This is, this will give you a different back. So you wanna really reach out, be realistic, and then gently release it out. Okay, take a moment, let the forehead come back down to the stacked hands and release. That was excellent, excellent. Yeah, so I remember back in the 80s, way back then, when I was in university, they used to teach for low back pain, doctors would prescribe bed rest. And uh, some of you might remember that, like don't move the area. And then they quickly discovered with more technology, surface EMG, they realized, no, you've got to get the nerves firing or you'll lose the mobility. So things like this kind of a back bend stimulate the nerves and of course work the muscles along the spinal column and really helpful for back pain. We just need to know obviously how far to lift in order to activate those nerves and muscles. It really does work the whole back. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing I think worth mentioning is uh, we have a fantastic uh, doctor that passed away uh, two years ago, Dr. Mel, oh, I just had his name, um, and he was, he, was the, he was the pain specialist of the world. He developed a, um, a questionnaire that helped people identify pain and name it and um, calibrate it, if you will, and cut words like sharp, burning, oh, yeah. and because people didn't really, no doctor really acknowledged the pain. And what he found was going up the spinal column, and feel free to child's pose while I give this next lecture. <laughs> um, and he, um, he helped people uh, realize that there's a gateway in the, in the uh, spinal column, and this was, this was brand new, um, that if you open up a certain gateway, like let's say you have a little bit of low back pain, and then you feel that pain, then it opens up the next segment and another gateway, and pretty soon you've got more pain. However, if you take care of the pain, rather than go pain, which will cause reaction, fight or flight response, then you actually dull the gateway, it might not open. So yoga is an example of that. When you go to do something and it feels like effort, if you breathe and you relax and just go to the place you can, no ambition, then that gateway doesn't lock you. The nerve doesn't not fire. So you have more uh, movement. And that's what you want to do in your breathing is, is breathe, breathe, breathe. If you hit a lock, lockdown point, a place where you can't go, that's okay. You stay there and you breathe. 
and that helps to yeah. keep more and more and more of you firing and opening in all the pathways in the spine opening. So from that position, we're going to go into kind of a typical um, quad stretch, and I'll just demonstrate. And you see this, everybody doing this, you know, on the side of the road or at the park, and they'll do the quad stretch. But I just want to teach it to you in a sideways position because it's a great way to open the front body. So we're going to lie on your left side, please. And we'll take the left hand under just to act as a pillow. And now you've got a straight neck. And then you take the top right leg and you press the knee away. So you can hold on to the toes or where you need to. And you press the knee away so you're long right through the top of the thigh. <coughs> Good, Tracy, you can bend the underside knee. Yeah, everybody bend the underside knee to give you that basis of support. That's it, Sandra. Press the top knee away, away, away from you as much as you can. Oh, this one. So you're, yeah, that's it. Yeah, pressing that top knee away. Excellent. Excellent. Really good. Now press your hip forward. So you've got your right knee pressing away. Press your front right pocket area forward so you're super long through the waist and breathing really good and then you can release and let that leg down good let that top knee come forward open up the fetal position bring the knee to the floor and then roll onto your back so your head's going to come down and take that right elbow back sorry the uh yeah, right elbow back. And you could do straight arm back, twist, fall to that side, or you can bend the arm. You can bend that right arm to let more of a stretch open through the chest. See what is your best version of that pose. Good. And staying with your breathing. And see if you can press the knee a little further away. Getting really long through the waist. Really good. And then release. Okay, very good. And now we'll come to the other side. Come on over to the right side. Come on over to the right side. Oh. Bend the underside knee for balance. Take a hold of that left foot. Let the elbow come back. Press the knee away. Good. Nice and long in through the thigh. So you get a really good length there. Beautiful. That's it. Good. Press the left pocket area forward to open up and through the waist. Good, the elbow is back, that top right elbow is, left elbow is back. Good, keep pressing the knee away. Continue to open through the thigh. Breath. A little more if it's okay. Really good. And then you can um, uh, take that top left knee forward, open the scissors of the fetal position, take your left arm back, either a bent elbow on the left arm to get a bigger stretch, or the arm is straight. Just feel what is, what is right there to give you the best stretch. Let that shoulder fall back wherever you are. Beautiful. And then breathe in, come on back to the side and then pull the knees up to you 
and you're going to pull the knees into your body. Roll onto your back and pull the knees in wide. And then let your, your feet release to the floor. And then take a moment to do any last little maneuver you think you want to do. It might be anything at all. Just whatever feels great. Take a minute. And another five full breaths to finish. Two more full breaths to finish. And then you can finish the pose you're with and we will return to total Surrender coming into Shavasana. Yeah, so get all snuggled up if you need your blanket. Today I'll do a yoga nidra um, to bring us into relaxation. I'm actually doing that because if I play music, I won't be able to give you guys this video because it It'll be licensed music, right? Oh, right. <laughs> so I've got to get my videographer to put a loud music on top of it. <laughs> I think that's what I'll do. You figure the stuff up as you go. <laughs> so letting your body rest back. <sighs> Yoga Nidra is guided relaxation, basically. Just a big fancy word that sounds even more relaxing. I remember taking a course at uh, York University and um, I had gone back as a mature student. I was finishing my phys ed degree and we took this course, Relaxation Management, and every single phys ed student took it because it was the easiest course in the entire syllabus. And one day she had us um, to do biofeedback she had us put a little tiny uh, thermometer taped to our finger, and it was, I remember it was our index finger, and we needed to walk around and talk to people and see what would happen to our temperature. And um, I, was a, I was a mature student, so everybody was young and pretty to me, and uh, the cutest guy in the class, when I came up to him, I had to tell him that my temp how much my temperature rose because we, we had to see what happened to our temperature. So whenever I think of guided relaxation, I think of my, how embarrassing it was <laughs> to do biofeedback in public. <laughs> that aside, we'll go right into relaxation. So as you lie back, just take a moment to feel your body heavy and warm and notice what it feels like to be supported by the floor to feel everything let go to feel like any kind of activity in the mind falls
to feel like there's nothing to do except receive. And you're receiving the energy that is your life force and feeling it move in you to create an inner order. Do any little wiggling you may need to do to feel more in contact with the ground. And at any moment, do that as more and more synapses release in your tissue. And take a deep breath in. Good. Now as we scan the body, let's begin at the top. Have a feeling of the head heavy on the floor and the scalp relaxed. And feel the smoothness of the forehead and the ears resting back. Feel the face relaxed and the jaw. Feel a little space between the upper and lower teeth, just about the size of a grain of rice. And feel the throat soft. Feel the neck long and free. Feel the weight of the shoulders back, chest open. And as you do, notice if you need to take the shoulders down a bit, shoulder blades under to open the chest and the ribs. And then feel that space just in between the shoulder blades resting back. Lots of sense of a heavy upper body as the front body opens. And then for a moment, just feel beauty the beauty of stillness and of being here on this glorious day in nature and with each other in such an open, receptive way. And then notice the weight of the, the back and the ribs of the back releasing into the ground. and feel the weight of the pelvis and the tailbone on the floor. Feeling the weight of the buttocks, helping to draw the tailbone down. And take in a nice full breath. And then feel the belly. Maybe you notice the breathing. Maybe you notice the belly rises when you inhale. Maybe you want to take in a deeper breath. Notice if the chest expands on the in-breath. And feel yourself sink on the exhale. Everything sink on the exhale. And then notice the weight of the arms on the floor, backs of the arms supported. Palms rolled up to the ceiling with the fingers naturally curled. And the forearms soft and the wrists heavy. And the hands soft and open and receptive. And then notice the backs of the legs, long and releasing. Feel the backs of the knees, maybe they're bent and supported by the bolster. Or long and the back 
backs of the legs are lengthening out. Feel the front thighs soft and dropped back. And then feel the weight of the calves on the floor that we massaged earlier and compressed. Let them feel heavy and you know, draw down from there to the weight of the ankles on the floor. The feet just rolled out and soft through the toes and breath. And then again, for a moment, taking a deeper breath. And again, feel the beauty of this moment and being here and taking this time to be in stillness. Stillness is like a homecoming, a return to that place inside that feels all that you are. And then take in again, finally, one final, <laughs> not final, full deep breath. And again, a nice deep breath. And then begin to bring your awareness back, back to this room. And begin to wiggle the body in any way that feels great. slowly starting to wake up the body again. Good, and breath. Okay, come on you guys, bend the knees. <laughs> Draw the legs in. Do a little rock side to side. <laughs> Good. Breath. And then gently roll over to your right side. Slowly draw up to seated position. We'll take a moment to sit in our upright position. Good. Ooh. And we'll bring our hands together and bow in namaste. 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 Oh. Lovely. Thanks for being here.